Of recent years, there's been a huge shift in the zeitgeist around inclusivity, and the fashion world has experienced this earthquake like none other. Gone are the days of industry-picked supermodels, like Helena's, Kate's and Giselle's of yesteryear, and they're now being replaced by a new, more diverse and disruptive set. And with their popularity, it comes from the ground up, with huge social media followings, global citizenry, and points of view that inspire plurality, equity, and social justice. This new vanguard of models in the fashion industry are representing like never before. Theodora Quinn Liven, known in the industry as Teddy, is a perfect example of where things are headed. Her career went stellar when discovered by Louis Vuitton's creative director, Nicolas Gasquier, in 2015. At 23, the popular Boston-born model walked the catwalk for Jeremy Scott, Carolina Herrera, and Diane von Furstenberg. Then in 2017, she caused a stir at New York Fashion Week when she came out as transgender. In the fall of 2017, I came out the morning of a, another very prestigious show in an article on a major news network in the middle of Fashion Week. Donald Trump had just been elected president, and he made it very clear that taking away rights and protections for transgender people was a key point of his political agenda. This gave me even more motivation to come out, not just for my own liberation, but to turn my secret into a teachable moment. To educate is to destigmatize. Why she hid what she calls her darkest secret is not only political, but historical, harking back to an environment which has traditionally been harsh to those that fall outside the gender norms. Take the popular 60s British Vogue underwear model, April Ashley. When a British newspaper revealed she was transgender, she never worked in the country again. In the 70s, Tracy Africa Norman was a black trans model who hit the height of her career as the face of Clairol's hair dyes. She went on to shoot for a Vogue Italia, Ultra Sheen, Avon and Essence before her career prematurely ended when she was outed as trans in 1981. And even as late as 2003, with the likes of trans Senegalese model Barbara Diop, found their gender status to close doors when private became public. Perhaps thanks to 2009 appearance of trans model wannabe Isis King on America's Next Top Model, in the past decade gender plurality has come to the surface of public consciousness, creating a new awareness and great acceptance. In the last couple of years, Advocates such as Andrea Pajic and Valentina Sampaio have come on the scene as openly trans from the get-go, breaking records with covers on Vogue and Sports Illustrated and securing contracts with L'Oreal and Victoria's Secret. But for Teddy, the journey has been more nuanced. Fighting stigma, she first had to come out to her conservative parents. I always knew I was female. You don't just wake up one day and decide to be male or female, you just know. I was really scared during the daytime that people were going to be physically violent to me because people would. And I just wanted to go outside and like be normal and like breathe fresh air. So I would go and walk around at like midnight. Going outside, I remember my mom caught me one time. I had to explain to her why. I told her I was just like, I don't feel comfortable living as a male. I just was so relieved when she said, okay, we have to do something about this. Even though she didn't understand it, she could see in my face and in my eyes the urgency. 
Teddy's mother was reluctant, but eventually helped the transition with medical care and support. Her dad took a little longer to accept the change. My dad had always discouraged me from coming out as transgender publicly, since there are a lot of people who want to hurt trans people for simply existing. When I started modeling after high school, I chose to conceal my truth. Because I was so passable as a female, I was closed off to the idea of telling anyone. I had a very normal life. Once her parents saw that Teddy could live in the world safely and comfortably, the process got easier. She obviously had to battle the ups and downs of hormone replacement therapy, her shifting identity, and inner turmoil to share her truth to the world. Not telling people for me was not only to protect my career, but it was also to protect myself from being hurt. I would always kind of ask myself, like, if not now, when? If not me, who? I went through, like, extraordinary lengths to present as cisgender, like going into the bathroom and, like, taping myself. Just putting your body through that every single day, it's not easy. Teddy's decision to go public became inevitable as the political climate in the US shifted. Trumpism intensified division in the community and the sense of urgency increased. It's very strange to feel one way your whole life and not be able to identify that way. I have so much more work to do and I have so much more to learn about my community. But I was told my whole life that my community wasn't a valid one, so I never felt like I needed to ed educate myself on it. I kind of got to this point where I was like, I, I was like, am I feeling ashamed even after I've come out as trans about being trans? The transgender piece of me will always be with me despite everything else. And there's nothing I can do to change it. And if there's nothing that I can do to change it, then isn't it worth accepting? Teddy's decision has prompted a fair share of negativity, but it's also garnered much support from within the industry. Designer Mark Jacobs is at the forefront of Teddy's supporters. I respect and admire and support Teddy's decision to come out as transgender. Now more than ever, it is vital that we pledge our allegiance to the LGBT community and use our voices to encourage and inspire acceptance, equality, understanding and love, said Jacobs. GLAD president Sarah Kate Ellis added that Teddy is sending a phenomenal message to transgender youth by using her personal story to show that transgender women can and should aspire to be whatever they want to be. Luckily for Teddy, her darkest secret led to greater opportunity and a platform for her community. At 5'11", with amber eyes and magnificent cheekbones, she's modelled for Chloe in 2019, became the first openly transgender model to be hired by Chanel, John Galliano also chose her to front the Margiela Mutiny fragrance campaign. Contrary to the usual flowery romantic branding of other perfumes, Margiela Mutiny offers a sultry tuberose and leather-infused scent that's all about defying convention and gender norms. In her personal life, Teddy is still somewhat of a rebel, embracing her sexual plurality to challenge and confront. A scroll through her Instagram shows a woman who's not afraid to bear it all. With her body positive attitude and advocacy, Teddy's profile continues to go from strength to strength. Moreover, Teddy is upbeat about the ramifications of a new role as a leader of justice and equality. She has even embraced it, using her platform to publicly boycott any designer or brand linked to sexual misconduct after having experienced it herself. I feel a deep sense of responsibility to not only myself, but to my community. And I want to help break the stigma. I want to help push the world forward and help people to think more progressively about this issue. Since joining the vanguard of celebrities and public figures advocating for gender diversity in the public eye, Teddy has found herself forever battling ignorance and adverse stereotypes. Many see trans people as mentally unwell or unfit for regular work. Teddy uses herself as an example of how they can succeed in even the most judgy places. You can be successful without surgery and I think that's a really important message. But as I've always told you, if you're bold enough and strong enough to be who you really are and to be comfortable with your differences, these are the people that change the world.